Welcome back. It turns out Volkswagen is not changing its name to Volts with a T wagon. The electrical play on words there. The car maker got a jump on April Fools with this marketing prank, but it may backfire. The hoax, designed to call attention to their new line of electric vehicles, uh, also could cause some problems with for them. And some lawyers are now saying the Security and Exchange Commission will likely take a closer look at the fake name change because it caused Volkswagen stock price to jump almost 5%. Now, of course, Volkswagen has had some trouble with marketing claims before. Remember when a federal judge ordered them to pay a multi-billion dollar fine that was for rigging their diesel-powered vehicles to cheat on government emissions tests and lying about it to consumers? Let's welcome in our brand power team now to talk about how Volkswagen is going to recover from this snafu. Welcome back. Media relations expert and founder of Allison May Public Relations, Allison Maloney, also a Newsmax contributor. And back again, Dr. John Tantillo, an applied research psychologist. Great to see you both. Great to be here. Thank you. All right, so Allison, maybe a little tone deaf here, considering that Volkswagen uh, had some trouble uh, with that $4.3 billion settlement they had to reach with the DOJ. So that was the whole diesel scandal, of course. They also, though, managed to recover from being Hitler's favorite car before World War II. So, you know, nothing's impossible here. They have always had a cheeky approach to branding. It was even a topic on Mad Men, the TV show. You see this yet? I have. I don't know what I hate about it the most, the ad or the car. You know, they did one last year, same kind of smirk. Remember, think small. It was a half-page ad and a full-page buy. You could barely see the product. I don't get it. Elvis just got back from West Germany. Why not put him in it? They must be getting results. They keep going back to the well. And there it is. That's what you always remind us, John. They must be getting results because they keep going back to the well. But, you know, Allison, this question is really for you. You know, Volkswagen does have this history of kind of, you know, cheeky advertising, maybe a little too cute by half here. Yeah. They do. I think at this time where we are being, you know, cheeky like this just doesn't work, right? They have this press release on their website. Some news outlets saw it. And, and they shared the story. And so we have so much misinformation out there right now that I think that the American public and the consumers really don't want this type of marketing. I think that they want real marketing. You can have fun with it, but this just wasn't appropriate. This is, uh, you know, they, they've had so much controversy surrounding their marketing that I think maybe they should change it up a little bit instead of continuing to do what they've been doing. Yeah, you know, I think people, <laughs> what people really want, and it, it's April Fool's. I love an April Fool's prank as much as the next guy. Uh, but John, this Volkswagen, I mean, it sounds like one of my dad, bad, or bad dad jokes. Yeah. Well, John, uh, if you go back to what Volkswagen really means, it means people's car. And even though the good folks at Mad Men didn't like or didn't get the brand, it was a very, very popular brand uh, that uh, when I was growing up, every college student had, including this one, uh, had a Volkswagen. It was, uh, it was, was uh, it the bug John or that... was it the, were you more of a microbus guy? No, I was, I was a fastback guy. Okay. All Get right. It? <laughs> I got you. I got but, you. But, uh, this is a great, by the way, I, I think this was a great brainstorming idea. It wasn't really a smart branding idea. And I say that because it, they were trying to focus the name on the new electric car, Volt, as in Volts wagon, right. which isn't bad, but it needs some testing. And if you're a public company, you've got to get the Securities and Exchange Commission you to sign this, off on the police. You got to think these through. It, it does. I mean, it's not necessarily original either, uh, because it, it reminds me of what IHOP tried to do a few years ago. I think when they changed their name to the International House of Burgers, I think, or something like that. Anyway. Yeah. Save, save all these uh, tricks and just be honest with the American public. And, you know, and again, Allison, going back to the well, you know, it works. I want to talk, too, about these Nike shoes. I guess they're not really Nike shoes. It's made by a company called Mischief, and Nike claims they don't have anything to do with it. But going back to the well when it comes to, you know, selling your soul to the devil, this is kind of a similar theme that's been present in advertising. I don't know, as long as we've had advertising, I guess, and we've had the devil. But... Again, is there a point at which this stuff just goes too far, Allison? 
I mean, personally, I think it goes too far. I was actually talking to my daughter about it earlier, but the reality is, is they sold out of these thousand, over a thousand dollars for these shoes, John, they sold out. So something they're doing is working with a specific audience that they're trying to target. It's not, I wouldn't buy the shoes, but it's working for them. Obviously Nike's not very happy about it, um, but because they're, they're not part of it, but it's working somehow. I don't agree with it, but. Well, you know, John, this is one of those things. You always talk about these tried and true things. And, you know, Robert Johnson, the famous blues player, went down to the crossroads and apparently sold his soul to the devil to be the best blues player of all time. But this is one of those stories that works for some reason, John. Well, you know, uh, Nike had to do this because it was a clear infringement on their trademark which is Nike. And uh, the Patent and Trademark Office doesn't look too favorably if you decide not to pursue this in court. So they had to do this uh, for fear of their uh, brand uh, not being a brand anymore, but be being generic. Yeah, I, you know, I wonder. How do you like that one? Well, you know, it happens. Band-Aids, right? We can all use Band-Aids as a term, even though it was once a specific That's name correct. brand. Those types of things. They do have to protect their brand. I'm just a little surprised that Nike even let it get to this point. Um, you know, they're probably very aggressive with their litigation and cease and desist orders. Anyway, maybe they kept it a secret. Who knows? Allison, John, great to see you both. We'll see you next <laughs> Thank week. You. Thank you.